What's up guys, it's Lucas and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please take a second and do so. You get updates every time I do something like this kind of video. So if you click this, it's a good possibility that you're considering buying an Epiphone Les Paul. And let me just start off by saying as a caveat here, um, there's nothing wrong with Epiphone guitars and I'm not intentionally going to crap on Epiphone guitars. I just want you to be aware of some options first before you buy something. So if you're thinking about buying a Les Paul, and you're thinking maybe an Epiphone because of the price point, which is a totally understandable reason, um, I wanted to pose another option to you. It's one thing if you're thinking, I want to buy a Les Paul, I want to buy a Gibson because I want to buy an American-made guitar. Totally fair, support American labor, go Uncle Sam. But if you're going to buy an Epiphone right out of the gate, that means you're going to be buying a foreign-made guitar. Now, if you're going to buy an import guitar and you want that kind of guitar, then you might consider something like this. This is a 1977 Greco Les Paul made in Japan. This guitar I bought uh, off of Reverb from a seller in Japan and I got it shipped to me. I lived on the East Coast in North Carolina and uh, I got it shipped to me for $550. So if I'm not mistaken, right now an Epiphone Les Paul standard probably costs around $500 to $600. You know, obviously if you buy one used, you can get one cheaper. Um, but this guitar is just miles better than one of those guitars. Japanese-made instruments are fantastic. The attention to detail, even on the inexpensive Japanese guitars, is just head and shoulders above Chinese-made guitars. It just is. This guitar is made a lot closer to the specs of an actual Les Paul and it's gonna be around about the same price point as a comparable Epiphone. Some differences would be, you can buy an Epiphone Les Paul Standard or a Les Paul Custom or something like that, and it's gonna have this pretty flame top on it, but that's not a real top. What you're generally gonna get with those is a guitar that's made of mahogany or a mahogany-like wood uh, with a very thin maple veneer over top of it. The full cap, that maple cap that goes on top that's like three quarters of an inch thick at the thickest point or maybe thicker, it does make a difference in the sound. Maple, in my experience, generally adds a little bit of a snap to the guitar and some kind of harmonic qualities that you don't quite get the same thing with a mahogany-made guitar. So that's one thing. So if you get one of these Greco-made guitars that are, or something similar, like a Japanese Les Paul, uh, it's going to have a full thickness maple cap on it. There's actually uh, a guy on YouTube, I believe his name is Rob Hansen who did a really, really good couple of videos kind of explaining all the stuff about Greco Les Pauls and kind of what the model numbers mean and what you're gonna see in each kind of tier of model. And so I'll leave a link to those videos in the description if you wanna check him out, go subscribe to his channel. This guitar, this is an EG800, is built very, very similar to how Les Pauls would have been made by Gibson at the same time period. So it has a two-piece maple top, there's just seam down the center, just how traditional Les Pauls are done. And these guitars are made with a pancake body, so there's two pieces of mahogany that are glued together. They're a little bit thinner this way. The neck is made of maple, which uh, some Epiphones have maple necks, some of them have mahogany necks. I think it kind of depends on which one you get. But uh, this one is made of maple, which is again how Gibson was doing it at the time. With this, you're going to get the same kind of binding that you get on a Gibson where it has the fret nibs that come over the edge of the fingerboard. I have done one major modification to this guitar, I changed the pickups. There's nothing wrong with the pickups that were in this guitar, and if you want to hear those, I have a demo video of this guitar before I did that. I'll link that in the description as well. But these are Planet Tone pickups. This is a full throttle bridge and a 78 Pasadena neck. But everything else on the guitar has been left alone. It's stock. So it has full-size pots that were done uh, 50 style wiring, beautifully done. The workmanship on the inside of the cavity is superb. Uh, the frets are perfectly leveled, crown dressed. I mean, not a spot of buzz anywhere on the neck. It has a real bone nut on it rather than like a plastic or some kind of ivory type thing. Um, like I said before, it's got the 
really nice open book headstock. What I have here to kind of give you a reference is this guitar, which I said is a 1977 Greco EG800. And then right next to it here, I have my 2018 Gibson Les Paul Traditional. So this is the full fat Gibson Les Paul, you know, it's a $2,700 guitar. Everything on this guitar is currently stock except for the strap buttons, which I put strap locks on. And so I'm going to compare the two guitars uh, in terms of build and, you know, kind of how they're made. And then I'll play them back to back so you can kind of compare. And I think what you'll see is that the difference is pretty negligible. So the biggest difference for me between these two guitars is what the finish is made of. So this EG800 guitar is made of, uh, or excuse me, is finished in like a, some kind of polyurethane or polyester type finish. It's not a thick finish, but it is very hard and it's a different makeup. Whereas this, the Gibson, is going to be made with nitrocellulose finish. But if you're getting an Epiphone, what you're gonna get with that is uh, a polyurethane finish and a pretty thick one at that. If you're already gonna get a guitar with a poly kind of finish on it, better guitar, in my opinion. But the hardware is all really, really good. Of course, the hardware and stuff on the Gibson is really good too. Um, the Epiphone hardware tends to be pretty decent. Um, usually you're, the tuners will probably be Grovers and you know, you have uh, import kind of stop tail tunematic stuff, but it's good. Um, the thing where Epiphones suffer, in my opinion, is the electronics. The switch usually is pretty bad. I never, ever like Epiphone stock pickups. I've never heard one that I thought sounded good. And uh, the electronics usually are the kind of small, like, I call them import pots. Um, usually, I mean, they work, but they tend to, when you roll the volume off, um, it gets muddy real quick, which is a wiring thing more than anything, but they're not super high quality components. Um, all that stuff is, of course, upgradable, but as you start upgrading things, you're going to be spending more and more money, whereas you could buy something like this, which is a little bit of more of a vintage piece. It's done more in the style of the traditional Les Paul, and most of that stuff's going to be done for you already. And like I said, the pickups that came in this guitar were totally fine, good sounding pickups. I just wanted something a little different, which is why I replaced these. But everything else, the pots, all this hardware and everything's all stock, and this guitar sounds and plays great. That's pretty much the major differences. Let's check out some sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically play these guitars back to back through a clean sound and then through a kind of a dirty Marshall sound and then a lead sound. And you can hear there's not a whole lot of difference and that's kind of the point.
Okay, so there you go. That's kind of a uh, shootout comparison between the Greco here and the American Gibson Les Paul traditional. Um, obviously, there are some differences. I can hear them as I'm playing, and I can kind of feel it a little bit too. But it's, you know, it's pretty negligible, and I would chalk most of that up to that this guitar has pickups that are a little bit hotter, a little bit uh, fatter sounding than the pickups in the traditional, and so it's a little bit more compressed and kind of uh, chunkier. So this guitar lends itself to the heavy stuff really nicely. Um, but other than that, feel and kind of playability wise, these guitars are really, really on par with each other. And I think that this guitar really, really outshines the Epiphone comparables. Now again, as I've said before in the video, I'm not trying to dump on Epiphone. Um, in fact, I have an Epiphone Flying V behind me on the wall there. Um, but this, for comparable money, to me, is a superior made guitar. So the big thing to consider is that you can't, unless you're going to Japan, um, you can't really pick one of these up and play them first. So you kind of just have to take a chance on it. Um, but if you do some research, watch the video links I posted in the description and are patient, um, you can find one that is a really, really good guitar and that you will keep for life and you'll be super happy with. And I think ultimately you won't later sell to try and upgrade to like a Gibson version like you might with an Epiphone. Until next time, I have been Lucas and I will catch you later.